tonight. Big news out of Barcelona. Now you can live stream whatever you want straight from Twitter. And why you'll pay more to find a mate if you're old. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 285 from Monday, March 2nd, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N-2. Happy Monday. I'm Megan Maroney. Welcome. Can we put this blue and black dress behind us already? Good. Let's get started on the tech news of the day. The biggest mobile event of the year is finally here. Mobile World Congress kicked off in Barcelona yesterday with Samsung's announcement of two new phones, the Samsung Galaxy S6 and the Samsung Galaxy 6S, X, 6S Edge. Unlike Samsung's previous phones, these new flagship phones are made of metal with the newest version of Gorilla, Gorilla Glass. They also have no removable battery and no micro SD slot. Twit's news director, Mike Elgin, is at Mobile World Congress, and he snagged an interview with Phil Goldstein, editor of Fierce Wireless, to talk about the Samsung phones. Let's take a look. This is Mike Elgin at the Samsung event at uh, Mobile World Congress, and we're talking to Phil Goldstein, the editor of Fierce Wireless, and uh, thank you so much for joining us here today. No problem. All right, so what do you think of the, uh, okay, let's, let's admit it, the, the Galaxy S6 Edge is clearly the star, at least in my opinion, clearly the star of this show. What did you think of it? I think it's a direction that Samsung needed to take. I think that they had been criticized pretty heavily with the S5 for kind of keeping the same design language that they had with the S4. It was plasticky. There wasn't a whole lot new to it. Uh, I think that, you know, they obviously introduced with the uh, Note Edge last fall this concept of sort of the overflow screen or the side screen for different apps. Now they're bringing that, you know, on both sides of the Note Edge. So, uh, you know, it's something new for Samsung. It's a direction that they needed to go. I think the metal bodies um, and the overall design language should help set them apart. Uh, but the Note Edge or the S6 Edge rather, um, you know, definitely is uh, the standout for sure. Well, other big announcements from the event were the HTC One M9, which is only a slight improvement over the M8. There were also newer VR games announced and apps for the Samsung Gear, Gear VR and Sony's Morpheus VR. There were also cognitive computing capabilities in, announced in the new Qualcomm Snapdragon chips. They claim to give your mobile device brain-like learning capabilities. But perhaps the biggest news to come out of Barcelona is not a smartphone or a VR headset. Speaking at Mobile World Congress keynote, Sundar Pichai, Senior Vice President of Products for Google, announced that Google might be getting into the wireless business. Here to talk to us about this and a few other stories is Roberto Baldwin of The Next Web. Welcome, Roberto. Hi, how's it going? Good. So Pichai said that Google would be creating a new wireless service, but they wouldn't be competing with the big four wireless carriers. Rather, Google's wireless service would focus on technical innovations like how to create seamless handoffs between Wi-Fi and call networks to prevent dropped calls and automatically reconnect them. So do you have any other ideas on about what other technical innovations Google might put forward with their new wireless service? Well, I mean, that this is... Google likes to experiment. I mean, they have all those ad dollars. They might as well put them towards something. And which, to me, I think that's a good idea that, you know, they, they have Google Glass, which, they, you know, the driverless car. Uh, they, have, they, they also announced uh, Google Titan, which is drones that will be beaming Internet down. So they have Loon and Titan. So you'll have balloons and drones above you shooting Internets everywhere. Um, and then with this new mobile carrier, man, it... I mean, I think, I, I, I mean, I don't, like I said, like you said, they're not going to compete with AT&T or T-Mobile or Verizon. In fact, they're going to be leasing bandwidth from those people, uh, sort of like Cricket and uh, Boost Mobile and those uh, sort of uh, companies. Um, but, you know, they might find something out. They might learn something that's, that'll help, help them in the future, both with their, their uh, beaming Internet down from the sky, uh, maybe with uh, Nexus designs. I mean, every, every little thing that they experiment, I'm sure it goes back. And even if something doesn't work out, like maybe Google Glass never really works out, 
I'm sure everything they learn from that is going to be, you know, absorbed and used in something else. Right. And when it comes to wireless, it might mean um, just better technology, better pricing for us. Um, hopefully that's what they're trying to do with Google Fiber also. Uh, so Pachai said we'd see these ideas come to fruition in the next few months. Uh, do you have any guesses on when a kind of wireless plan might roll out? I mean, we have uh, Google I.O. coming up in the summer, so they might announce something to arrive maybe in the fall. And I, I doubt it's going to be outside of either Kansas City or San Francisco. I can see Kansas City because they have a pretty close ties with Sprint, and Sprint is based out of there, and that's where they have their, their fiber uh, initiative started. So maybe Kansas City might be getting something, maybe the Bay Area. Um, you know, it's, it's probably in the, I'm, I'm guessing in the fall, maybe winter, maybe not even until two, 2016. Mm -hmm. So what's the most interesting thing that you've seen come out of Mobile World Congress? That I think, you know, I, I really think it's the, you know, the mobile carrier idea from Google because, like I said, I mean, they have a lot of money that they can just kind of throw around. They, they, they don't have to do any of this stuff. They don't have to, like, make a phone. They don't have to, you know, they don't have to make a driverless car. They don't have to be beaming down the Internet from the sky. They, all they really need is to, to sit back and enjoy ad dollars. Um, but they do. They, they experiment. They try these new things out. And, you know, some of it will, you know, obviously be so they could sell you better ads. They could target you better. But some of it just seems like, you know, we want to try something new and see what's going to happen just because we have all this money. Well, isn't it, I mean, do you think that's what Apple's doing also? They have even more money. And uh, so is that why don't they do more experimentation like that? I, well, I mean, Google... I, I think when you're when you look at Google, one of the things of, of, I've always said about Google is Google doesn't know how to say no. I think someone just kind of walks into an office and is like, "I got this idea. What if we made cars that drove themselves?" Like, we don't make cars. No, no, no. But just okay, cool. I think Apple's a, a way more focused than Google. I think Apple, you know, they're they're a hardware company first and foremost. They're a software company to you know on that hardware. That software is you know if you want that software, you got to get you got to buy their hardware. So therefore, they're 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 far more focused. Um, you know, they, they really tiptoe into things and I'm sure they, they try a lot of stuff out, but they try it out internally. You know, if, if there's an Apple car, which, um, you know, I think that's, that's really an internal test. Let's try some stuff out. Let's test some things just so they can better understand the car industry, which is, you know, something they might want to get into with the, you know, CarPlay. Right. So let's move on to something much more pressing, the live video mm. of your cat sleeping. Uh, oh, yeah. You wrote a story in the Next Web about a new app called Meerkat. Uh, tell us how it works. Well, what it is is it, it, it attaches to your Twitter account and it allows you to live stream. And it, the, the barrier for live stream is, is really low. Uh, basically, you just load the app, you click on stream, and it just starts streaming. So no matter where you are, if you haven't gotten ready, that's sorry. Everyone can now see what you're doing, but it, it's very ephemeral. It's you know, it's kind of like Snapchat. Whoa! <laughs> That's what uh, I'm live streaming right now of Jeffrey Needles. Um, I asked him if I could, <laughs> <laughs> which uh, and he said yes. Uh, I asked Jason Howell if I could live stream his desk. He said no. Um, but yeah, it, it it is basically it's just it's what they say is everything that happens on Meerkat happens on Twitter. So as soon as you use it, as soon as you click the live stream and immediately tweets out mm -hmm. that you've done that. So yeah, as soon as you start it up, I mean, it's, it's out there, it's available for people to check out. Uh, it doesn't get saved to the cloud. You can't save it to your, to your device though. So if you stream like two hours of your cat sleeping, um, you could save that two hours of your cat sleeping to your device. No one should do that, but you could do that. <laughs> no one should do that. I mean, but right now, you know, it's, it's very much like, oh, look at this fun thing. We're all, you know, streaming ourselves. We're streaming our offices. We're streaming our cats for hours and hours on end. But, you know, if there's, you know, breaking news, someone's going, you know, there's, there's, there's a crime happens or a disaster. And to be able to just open an app and hit stream, that's, that's kind of amazing. You know, the, the barrier to actually starting a stream is really, really low with this app, which actually makes it uh, pretty cool. I knew there was a reason we were talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Cats! Right. Not just that Sarah Lane had it in the tech trunk crunch offices and uh, was showing around what kind of coffee. And as I pointed out to Roberto, she had more followers than his cats did. But he's okay with that. <sighs> so, well, she's been around longer than my cats, so I'm a, I'll, I'll allow it. So the other thing is uh, you can also watch who's watching you, right? Yeah, while you're streaming um, in the app, you can see uh, who's who's watching. You can sort of 
flick back and forth to see who is watching and tell you how many viewers you have and you can actually look at their uh, their, their their AVIs as they're watching your 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 stream. Well, so you so there was an article in Next Web that it, it went down for a while or someone thought that Twitter was blocking it, but that really wasn't true. Yeah, so there was an issue where, you know, is someone follows you, it starts tweeting, it automatically starts tweeting and Twitter had shut that down. Uh, so probably what happened, as opposed to Twitter just blocking them for the sake of blocking them, is they might have been in a violation of the terms of service in some cases. And maybe the way they were tweeting looked like spam. Uh, you know, Twitter doesn't want spam on their site. They, you know, they've, they've been working really hard to, to make Twitter better so more people will sign up for Twitter and so they can serve ads on Twitter. Um, when suddenly it looks like an app is just randomly spamming people, um, that's going to raise some red flags over there. All right. So the app is free. It's only on iOS now, or is there also an Android? It is only on iOS right now. Um, so, it, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, Android people. I'm sure they'll probably be. I'm everyone's sure the, 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 the stock uh, answer to will you be working on an Android uh, version of your app is we are researching it. Right. So I'm sure they are researching an Android version of this app, especially after today uh, tastes sort of like, you know, boost in, in users. Right. Okay, so now I have another big hard-hitting question for you. Uh, how many episodes of House of Cards did you watch this weekend? I've only watched the one. Oh, me too. I was, okay. <laughs> I no was spoilers. very. I had a lot of stuff to do on Saturday, and then I ended up doing the taxes. And then Sunday I went snowboarding. So Saturday evening was like getting all my stuff ready for snowboarding. So it's I, I've only seen one. And so we're, and then last night was, you know, when I got back, it was Walking Dead. Then I had to watch Bob's Burgers and then I had to go to bed because I have to go to work. So I probably won't see another one until tomorrow. I right. have plans this evening. And how many, I mean, Meerkat streams are you going to be watching instead of House of Cards? House of Cards is basically obsolete at this point, right? Yeah, we don't, we don't need it. I mean, who cares what Frank Underwood's doing? <laughs> what's Sarah, what is Sarah Lane drinking? What kind of coffee is she? Exactly. So, you know, what, what's, what's this, what kind of snacks are TechCrunch in, in, enjoying? Right. Well, thank you, Roberto. Roberto Baldwin from The Next Web. Uh, I'm sure we'll be catching up with what you or your cats are doing very soon. Thanks. And coming up, Obama criticizes China's tech policies again and pay more for Tinder so you can swipe left with more recklessness. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Lynda.com. Lynda.com is for problem solvers, for the curious, for people who want to make things happen. Maybe you want to master Excel, learn negotiation tactics, build a website, or boost your Photoshop skills. Lynda.com has everything you need to feed your curious mind. So this week I'm hosting two shows every day, so I need to be super productive, which isn't easy when part of my job is to watch people live stream their cat videos. That's why I've been taking Lynda.com's productivity courses like Time Management Fundamentals, I work for iPad Essential Training and the Getting Things Done course with David Allen, who is great. And new for 2015, David Allen answers some of the most frequently asked questions he receives about getting things done, or GTD, as we David Allen devotees call it. With a lynda.com membership, you can stream thousands of video courses on demand and learn your, on your own schedule from top experts who are passionate about teaching. Your lynda.com membership gives you unlimited access to training on hundreds of topics, all for one flat rate. Whether you're looking to become an expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new, I want you to visit lynda.com slash TN2 and sign up for your free 10-day trial. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2, and we thank lynda.com for their support. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. In an interview with Reuters, President Obama criticized China's new technology rules that require technology firms to install security backdoors in their systems and to hand over the encryption keys. Obama said that China must change their stance on backdoors if the United States is going to continue to do business with them. And today, gaming company Epic Games announced that they would now be giving away the graphic creation tool Unreal Engine 4. That's right, indie game creators used to have to pay $19 per month for the subscription for Unreal Engine 4, but now it's free. But you'll still need to pay a game royalty once you ship your super popular game. And Tinder Plus launched today. Guess what? It costs more if you're old. 
The online dating app company is calling Tinder Plus a premium addition to the Tinder service. With Tinder Plus, you can connect with people all over the globe, and you can also change your mind. So say you swiped left on someone by accident, or before you realized there was nobody better out there, Tinder Plus lets you use the rewind feature to take a second look. Tinder Plus will cost $9.99 a month, but if you're over 30, it will cost $19.99 per month. And please also include your broken dreams. And finally, tomorrow we'll have more news from Mobile World Congress, but we'll also be talking to Jason Snell from Six Colors and the Incomparable Podcast about Apple Watch rumors. So if you're into that, join me tomorrow. And if you're really into Apple Watch rumors and you have some of your own, email me at megan at twit.tv to tell me the craziest thing you think will be included in the Apple Watch or a crazy thing that you want included in the Apple Watch or something that you definitely don't want included in the Apple Watch or just email me at megan at twit.tv and write Apple Watch, Apple Watch, Apple Watch so I know that you're paying attention. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash tn2. Write to us at tn2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. This week I'll be hosting while Mike is away at Mobile World Congress. So I'll see you right back here bright and early. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.